China continues to dominate critical industries despite continued efforts by the US from a breakthrough in chip making technology to its stronghold on the rare earths market the west is really struggling to catch up with China's critical might this isn't just a trade war or a tech rivalry what we're witnessing is a quiet earthquake reshaping the balance of global power one transistor one operating system one soybean shipment at a time from Washington to Beijing, the tension isn't just political, it's technological, financial, and deeply strategic. As China pushes forward with a new generation of silicon-free chips and builds an entire software ecosystem to rival the West, the United States is finding its grip on global dominance slipping. The future is shifting, and it may no longer be written in English. So. Is the U.S. losing its lead to China? Let's find out. The Silent Shift in Silicon For much of modern history, silicon has been the backbone of the digital age. The world's most powerful computers, smartphones, and AI systems all run on it. The United States, with tech giants like Intel and TSMC, has long stood at the center of this silicon-driven world. But something unexpected is happening in a quiet corner of China. At Peking University, researchers have created a transistor that breaks all the rules, not just faster and more efficiently than the latest 3 nanometer silicon chips, but completely free of silicon. This transistor, based on two-dimensional materials like bismuth oxytelluride, runs 40% faster and uses 10% less energy than anything currently produced by Intel or Samsung. Even more surprisingly, it doesn't rely on restricted American manufacturing tools. That alone changes the equation. China has found a way to push forward in semiconductors without playing by U.S. rules. The breakthrough uses a gate all-around field effect design, offering better current control and efficiency. But it's the material, atomically thin and highly conductive, that sets it apart. This isn't a small improvement, it's a fundamental shift. The world has been racing to shrink silicon. China, out of necessity, has started asking if we need silicon at all. And the answer may be no. The implications are enormous and only beginning to unfold. Harmony OS and the rise of a new ecosystem. While the West debated over sanctions, Huawei was quietly building an escape route. Harmony OS is more than just an operating system. It's China's bold answer to decades of reliance on foreign software. After being cut off from Android and other US-based technologies, Huawei didn't stall. It accelerated. What began as a mobile OS is now evolving into a full-fledged PC ecosystem, complete with its own app store, interface, and AI assistant. Early versions of Harmony OS blended the best of Windows and Mac OS, but the latest iteration, Harmony OS Next, marks a dramatic shift. It no longer supports Android apps. That's not a limitation. It's a statement. Huawei is no longer interested in compatibility with the old world. It's building its own. The system runs seamlessly across devices, from phones to tablets to PCs, offering a fluid, interconnected experience that feels more like science fiction than software. You move your eyes, and the cursor follows. You think across screens, and your files do too. It's not just about design or speed. It's about independence. Harmony OS signals that China is no longer waiting for permission to innovate. It's creating a tech universe of its own. The financial earthquake that no one saw coming. While the tech battle makes headlines, a quieter but equally dangerous shift is unfolding in global finance. In late 2024, both China and Japan sold off a combined $113 billion in U.S. Treasury securities. The timing? Just before Donald Trump's re-election. This wasn't a coincidence. It was a signal. 
a sign that even America's closest economic partners are beginning to hedge their bets. Japan, facing rising domestic costs, needed liquidity for its stimulus plan. China, however, had a different motive. With Trump threatening renewed tariffs and pushing for tougher sanctions, Beijing began unloading U.S. debt to protect its currency and reduce dependence on American financial systems. In doing so, it struck at one of the most stable pillars of the U.S. economy, its debt market. Higher Treasury yields now mean higher borrowing costs for the U.S. government, businesses, and consumers. A weakened dollar could follow, shifting the balance of trade and triggering inflation at home. For decades, the world treated U.S. debt as a safe haven. But that trust is no longer guaranteed. This isn't just economic maneuvering. It's a recalibration of global power, one bond sale at a time. Now first, like always, be sure to hit the like button down below. It helps us out tremendously with the reach of this video. Thank you. The soybean shock and China's agricultural strategy. In April 2025, China abruptly canceled over $1.1 billion worth of U.S. soybean orders, 2.44 million metric tons rerouted to Brazil without warning. The effect on American agriculture was immediate and brutal. Prices on the Chicago Board of Trade plunged 8.2% in a week. Farmers across the Midwest were blindsided, with no backup plan in sight. The USDA began issuing warnings of insolvency risks in 11 states. Officially, China cited pesticide residue concerns, but neither the USDA nor the WTO found any violations. Analysts quickly pointed to a deeper motive, economic signaling. Beijing wasn't reacting to tainted crops. It was asserting leverage, and it was ready. Between 2020 and 2024, China funneled billions into Brazil's agricultural infrastructure, building railways, expanding ports, and securing trade routes. Now, Brazil can supply over 70% of China's soybean demand. In effect, China built its own backup plan and used it. This isn't just about soybeans, it's about resilience. China is systematically insulating itself from U.S. economic pressure, one sector at a time. From tech to trade to food security, the strategy is clear. Reduce vulnerability, build alternatives, and when the time comes, flip the switch. A new digital Cold War. Behind the headlines, a deeper shift is taking shape, one that resembles a digital Cold War. Unlike the 20th century standoff built on weapons and ideology, this new era is defined by transistors, operating systems, currency reserves, and supply chains. And China is playing the long game. From cutting-edge chips that bypass U.S. control to Harmony OS challenging Windows and Android, every move is part of a broader strategy, technological sovereignty. China doesn't want to compete on someone else's platform. It wants to build its own. That's why we're seeing massive state-backed investments in AI, quantum computing, rare earth minerals, and semiconductor research. On the other side, the United States is tightening sanctions, restricting access to chip-making tools, software, and cloud infrastructure. But these tactics may be fueling the very innovation they aim to suppress. Necessity is forcing China to explore radical alternatives, some of which are beginning to outperform legacy systems. This isn't a race to be first, it's a struggle to be independent. And in that race, the finish line keeps moving. The world is no longer neatly split between American tech and everyone else. A third path is emerging, and it's coming from the East. What this means for the world. The ripple effects of China's strategy are already spreading beyond its borders. Countries across Asia, Africa, and Latin America are watching closely. Not just out of curiosity, but necessity. As sanctions and tech restrictions fragment the global landscape, many nations are reconsidering their alliances and dependencies. 
For them, China's model offers something new, an alternative to Western-dominated systems. When Huawei launches Harmony OS in Africa, or when Chinese-made silicon-free chips reach markets in Southeast Asia, they come with more than hardware. They come with influence. Infrastructure deals, trade agreements, and digital partnerships follow closely behind. It's a soft power strategy disguised as tech exports. Meanwhile, Western companies are beginning to feel the tension. Global supply chains are being redrawn. Multinational firms now have to choose between two increasingly incompatible ecosystems, one led by the US, the other rising in China. This isn't just a shift in technology, it's a shift in control. The more China can offer complete homegrown alternatives, the less power the US holds over the rules of the game. The world isn't becoming more connected. It's being split into digital spheres of influence, and the divide is deepening by the day. The road ahead had for the US. For the United States, the challenge isn't just about catching up. It's about rethinking its position in a rapidly changing world. For decades, American dominance was built on two pillars, technological leadership and financial trust. Now, both are being tested. China is no longer the factory of the world. It's becoming the lab, the code base, and the design studio. And that shift demands a strategic response. But the U.S. response so far has leaned heavily on restriction, export bans, sanctions, and blacklists. While these moves slow China's access to key tools, they don't stop innovation. In fact, they may be accelerating it. Each new barrier forces Chinese engineers, scientists, and policymakers to look inward and build from scratch. If America wants to maintain leadership, it must invest, not just in defense, but in research, education, and infrastructure. It must foster an environment where innovation thrives at home and collaboration is still possible abroad. The future won't be won by walls, but by ideas. The real question is not whether China is rising. It is. The question is whether the U.S. is prepared to evolve. Because the era of unchallenged dominance is over. The world is moving and fast. This isn't just about China building faster chips or launching its own operating system. It's about a global shift in power, quiet, complex, and deeply strategic. The digital battlefield is expanding, from labs and factories to farms and financial markets. As the lines between technology and geopolitics blur, the choices made today will echo for decades. Will the world adapt to this multipolar future or resist it until it's too late? One thing is certain. The age of simple dominance is gone. We're entering an era where innovation isn't just progress, it's survival. And the race has already begun. Let's see where it leads.